We believe that our policy rate is likely at its peak for this tightening cycle. It will likely be appropriate to begin dialing back policy restraint at some point this year. But inflation is still too high. Ongoing progress in bringing it down is not assured. And the path forward is uncertain. You know, we tend to see a little bit stronger, this is in the data, a little bit stronger inflation in the first half of the year. I don't think we really know whether this is a bump on the road or something more. We're looking for data that confirm the kind of low readings that we had last year. Coming up in today's review, stocks close at all-time highs, on the back of a dovish Jay Powell, how he's pouring fuel on the fire, getting the bulls more excited, and sending gold back up. And surprise, surprise, Jay Powell towing the line again, reinforcing his dovish stance and commitment to cut rates. And now even talking about reducing quantitative tightening. That's the amount that they reduced their balance sheet and pool liquidity out of the system. On top of that, he increased his forecast for economic growth and inflation. Said the jobs market's holding up fine. There's no problems in the economy. And so it's no wonder that was music to the bulls of this stock market. And we saw another risk on day with growth sectors, technology, semis, communication, cyclicals, financials, and industrials all having a good day. While well, we saw a continued rotation out of the defensive stuff, staples, healthcare, and utilities, with energy, oil, and gas a little weak today as well. And so it's no surprise we broke out to all-time highs in S&P 500. Now at 52.24 on a solid green candle here today. And it is pretty much green across the board and red where the bulls want it to be. Volatility downtrending in all time frames. Bond yields back to downtrending in the short term along with oil. Healthcare the only major sector in downtrends. Also got the dollar index trending down as well, which is what the bulls want. And there's a look at the 11 major sectors today. Coming out in front, consumer discretionary, industrials and financials. And there's a look at the 12 month rolling returns. Still got communications and technology out front with the defensive stuff down there at the bottom. And so this parabolic grinding uptrend continues and looks to have strengthened today both technically and fundamentally on the back of that Federal Reserve commentary. No surprise, we've got a big volatility crush, especially looking at the VIX 9 day. Now at 11 and a half, with volatility risk premium, one and a half points. There is pretty much next to no fear in this market. And we just got a helping hand from bond yields pulling back with the two year at 460, 10 year at 427. And we've got high yield bonds shaping up, looking pretty good after consolidating. Just going out to a weekly chart on high yield bonds. to have been putting on this big bull flag all year, which we could break out of. And that's a really good sign for risk on and growth assets. Not to mention the dollar index, still tame, consolidating at best. And so animal spirits are well and alive. We've got Bitcoin bouncing back up almost 10% today and mega cap tech all doing well. There's Nvidia climbing over 1% reclaiming $900 a share and stick with me because I'll come back to the charts in a bit and I'll show you what else I'm seeing out there. First let's just take a look at the fundamentals news and data we got today and so the Federal Reserve had their meeting in which they kept interest rates on hold no surprise there but we also got to hear commentary from Jay Powell on the economy inflation interest rates along with the Federal Reserve's updated economic projections for this year and the Fed dot plot and so just looking at their previous projections in December to the ones we got today, big increase in the change in real GDP from 1.4% to 2.1%. That's huge. So they're expecting growth to accelerate in the economy, the unemployment rate to actually hold steady, if not come down now. They were previously projecting 4.1%. Now we're looking at 4%. PCE inflation, they've kept the same at 2.4%. However, core PCE inflation, they increased from 2.4% to 2.6%. That's a notable increase as well, almost 10% increase in their projections. And regardless of that, they're still projecting they'll go ahead with three interest rate cuts this year. Cut the federal funds rate by 75 basis points with the end of year target of 4.6. And there's a look at the new Fed dot plot in which all Fed members privately enter in their projections of what interest rates will be in the future without being named. And in the light blue is where it was in December. Here in the dark blue today, pretty much the same for this year, just a little bit higher. Just a few more members increased their projection to 4.6 and more noticeably so in 2025, their projections moved up a bit more closer to 4% and somewhat in 26 as well. However, they are still projecting that rates move down to under 3% in 2026. Not only does the market love the prospect of lower rates and good economic growth, it also loves liquidity and being backstopped by the Fed. And so we got another big bullish signal today, with the Fed saying they're gonna slow pace a quantitative tightening fairly soon. They were previously letting their balance sheet reduce at about 100 billion a month. That's let all the bonds, mortgage-backed securities, treasuries, in which they bought trillions of dollars of. Over the last 10 years, especially after COVID, 
couple of years after that, blew their balance sheet out to $9 trillion, helping to cause the everything bubble. They've been letting that come down. And even though they reduced the balance sheet by $1.5 trillion, they're going to slow that down now. As Jay Powell wants less potential for financial market stress. And there's a look at a 10-year chart of the Fed's balance sheet. We can see it peaked out just under $9 trillion in April 2022. Here we are today, $7.5 trillion, still well above where we were before the pandemic in February 2020 at $4.1 trillion. So all that extra fake artificial liquidity still sloshing around the system. And now we just got word he's going to reduce that. So we may never see the Fed's balance sheet below $5 trillion again in our lifetimes. And he's just going to keep the party going and fully backstop this market. So if there's no downside risk, it's very easy for the market, the algos, big hedge funds to lean against. Not to mention the constant flow of buying in people's pension funds helps to keep the market propped up as well. And just when you thought there was no more bullish signals possible, well, we could be in the midst of a changing Fed culture, inflation target. He's already hinted at the prospect they could be satisfied with 3% inflation and maybe quietly quitting their goal of 2% inflation. Even though he still likes to talk about that number, as we all know, it's what people do instead of what they say that really matters. And he's strongly hinting at wanting to cut rates, regardless of whether inflation gets down to that 2% number or not. So the Fed's shown investors his hand. We're going to have to see some really hot CPI prints for him to be able to avoid cutting rates. But like a lot of people know, if the central bank was serious about returning inflation to its 2% target, it would place more emphasis on waiting for more evidence to justify a cut. But now we're all wondering how serious is the Fed about its 2% target? Because looking at history, with the Fed willing to cut rates before inflation is close to target and GDP growth above trend, history teaches us this is a risky path. However, that's what the Fed should do if it was serious about inflation. But we're in election year and we're getting closer and closer to that point, not to mention the Treasury having to refinance a huge amount of debt. So you could translate all this into Jay Powell kicking the can down the road on inflation. Happy to pour fuel on the stock market, knowing full well he's loosening financial conditions, allowing risk assets to keep ripping higher. When we've already got oil moving higher, Shipping and cargo rates moving higher. Government and consumer still spending at record clips. Very likely to cause a resurgence in inflation down the track. However, if he gives his mates in the White House the best chance of re-election and the Treasury a chance to refinance, then I'd say he's happy to settle with 3-4% inflation. Potential resurgence next year, especially if Trump got back in, I'd say he'd have no problem raising rates again then. But for now... They ain't getting in the way of this bull market. If anything, they're amplifying it. So it's no wonder investors haven't been this bullish in years. They've got every reason to be. Momentum in the market, the AI hype, the Fed pivoting from hawkish to dovish and getting even more so. Not to mention we've got strong seasonality and medium term technical signals that suggest more upside for the stock market. Chances are we do finish higher this year. And looking back in history, when the S&P has gained more than 20%, in 20 weeks. Looking out 12 months, we're higher 95% of the time. Very strong stats. Not to mention we've got the most important stock in the market and the man of the hour, Jensen Huang. Also given more reason for the bulls to get excited in their latest AI conference this week, revealing his new Blackwell chip, which is head and shoulders above everything else out there. The current H100 chip is already really hot stuff. Buyers can't get enough of them. They can't make them fast enough, selling them at huge profit margins. And even if they didn't have these new Blackwell chips, they would still keep crushing it on the H100s. So this is going to allow them to dominate for at least another year or two before competition comes for them. And who knows, he may even be able to stay up front for longer than that. So it's no wonder he's being compared to Taylor Swift and even some people calling him the Steve Jobs of AI. And the guy seems driven to take it as far as he can. And he's been at this for a long time. He's been CEO since 1999. So he's clearly capable. And that stock price action just confirms that. And the whole semiconductor industry still on fire. Really strong trend here. A lot of momentum. It's defending its 50-day VWAP. And even looking at the fundamentals after this run, still appearing strong. Looking at my new quant factor scores indicator, which rates every stock on five major factors, momentum, growth, quality, value, and volatility, with five different scores either bad, poor, average, good or great, apart from volatility since the stock's bumping around so much. Four other major factors that have been shown in history to drive stock returns, momentum, growth, quality and value are still considered great. In fact, its valuation now is better than it was two years ago because its business, revenue and profits have exploded along with its stock price. And for those of you who aren't familiar 
with factors. There's plenty of research out there on it. And this paper here from MSCI, who create a lot of the indices that ETFs license from them to run funds. They identified six major equity risk premia factors, value, low size, low volatility, high yield, quality, momentum, saying they have solid explanations as to why they have historically provided a premium. Also in a research paper from Fidelity, they said the factors size, value, momentum, quality, yield, and low volatility are at the core of smart or strategic beta strategies and are investment characteristics that have enhanced portfolios over time. And so that's why I built this custom indicator on TradingView based on the five most robust and profitable factors over time. Momentum, quality, growth, low volatility, and value. And this chart here shows the annualized factor alphas. That's the premium return over beta market return. And we can see that over the last 60 years. It's very robust. And there's a look at the factor scores for Apple. Momentum's average. Value's bad, but it is a good quality company that's why it comes in great there's a look at berkshire hathaway good and great across the board but looking at a stock like micro strategy even though it's momentum and quality is scored as great its growth value and volatility are all bad and so overall in the long run stocks with bad factors deliver poor returns and stocks with great factors deliver good returns and there's a look at jp morgan it's been scoring well so anybody that's purchased my all indicator package from my website clickcapital.io gets all future indicators I make free of charge and so this latest one quant factor scores will be added to your account over the next 24 hours and if you don't already have all of my now 25 custom indicators for TradingView then stay tuned because next week I'm running an Easter special offering them all for a big discount one-time fee along with the option to get my online course as well and just getting back into the daily review we had yields trading up this last week or so maybe thinking that Jay was going to come out a little hawkish after we had these hotter than expected inflation prints of late. However, he didn't. He had a chance to try and tighten conditions just with his commentary, even just pushing back a little bit, but he didn't. And that's why we got treasury yields falling today. And we also saw a good pop in gold on the back of a weaker dollar and on expectations of real interest rates falling, increasing the relative attractiveness of non-yielding assets like gold. And even though we don't have general investor sediment too hot for gold, I've actually seen outflows from gold ETFs of late. What's been keeping a strong bid in the shiny precious metal is foreign central banks accumulating gold at record clips with net central bank gold purchases the last couple of years exceeding a thousand tons. With a trend likely to continue as many governments around the world are pursuing de-dollarization and want to swap their US dollars in reserve for gold. And we can see that bump up today after we did a little bit of a shallow pullback to the previous all-time high, held ground and finished up pretty strongly here today, given a strong bullish engulfing candle to the gold miners and junior gold miners as well advancing on good volume. Contrasting all today's action was a little bit of a pullback in oil after it just reached a bit of a resistance zone little technically overbought, only come off 1.3%, currently sitting at 81.50 a barrel. However, with a more aggressive Ukraine actually attacking Russian oil assets, market's likely to stay bid as well, and we could even expect a big response from Russia and Putin. We're likely to dial it up as Putin doesn't want to be seen as weak and losing this war. And if Ukraine continues to go after Russia's most important asset and source of revenue, oil, Russia are likely to respond in kind and do what they've already done before, and go after Ukraine's important exports of wheat and corn. And just looking at a monthly chart of wheat, even though it's spiked up when Russia first attacked Ukraine back in early 2022, it's pulled back quite a lot. Same deal with corn. And this has helped to keep food prices from really running away, even though we all know we're paying a lot more for our groceries than we were a couple of years ago. Over a third of the world's calorie consumption is derived from these two important agricultural commodities, wheat and corn. So if Russia wanted to get back at Ukraine and by extension the West, he could go after their wheat and corn, for which Ukraine is a large producer in the world. Over 10% of the world's wheat and over 15% of the world's corn. So it would have a material effect on these markets and could become an important driver of inflation going forward if they were to reverse course from here. Moving on, we just got earnings after the bell from one of the less popular chip makers and a little forgotten Micron technology, one of the old school highly traded chip stocks. And that is put in a blowout quarter with earnings per share and guidance jumping on board the AI train as one of the world's leading providers of memory chips as they don't compete directly with Nvidia and AMD who really drive the computing power behind AI instead Micron handles the huge memory demands of generative AI apps. And so there's huge halo effects happening from this AI bull market. We're seeing that in server rack providers like Super Microcomputer and now memory chips like Micron. There's a look at the daily. EPS coming in way above expectations. Revenue doing better as well. And it's going down the five minute chart after hours. Huge spike up, currently up over 15% as I speak. Trading at $111 a share. Given the whole semiconductor boost, 
after hours as I speak, up 1.43%. So it's no surprise in a hot market, we're going to see a flurry of IPOs. Companies looking to cash in on hot investor sediment. One of them being Reddit. However, they've got a bit of a mutiny going on over there. It's the platforms really run by all the long-time users and they're not too happy with what's going on. They've tried to counteract that by offering 8% of their shares to some of their biggest users. Have a lot of the users over there in the forums like Wall Street Bets. They're not dumb and they can see what's going on. The insiders cashing out. Just the top two insiders over the last year have a compensation of almost quarter of a billion dollars while the company has only done over 800 million in revenue and even though the website is 20 years old it still doesn't turn a profit looks like a classic cash out and the users are picking up on that and so they might actually trying to come after the stock when it comes onto the market and short it and it looks like it's turning into another snap which is pretty much in the same boat. Highly unprofitable, yet the insiders and management have paid themselves billions of dollars in salary and stock-based compensation, even though seven years after IPOing in March 2017, it's still trading down more than 50% from when it first came onto the market. And so it'll be interesting to follow how the Reddit IPO goes when it comes onto the market shortly. There's a look at economic data we got today. Not much out from the States, just the commentary from the Fed that we've already covered. Looking out tomorrow, it's Thursday, so we'll get jobless claims. We'll also get a look at some PMIs from services and manufacturing and a bit of housing data as well. Going into Friday, we'll get to hear from a few Fed speakers and not much else. And there's a look at the change in Fed fund futures. So yesterday, we were looking at about a 63% chance that we're gonna cut in June. Today, that's bumped up to about a 76% chance they're gonna cut in June. So the market's got even more confident in Jay Powell's dovish stance and still pricing in three cuts now for the rest of the year, which is in line with what the Fed is saying as well. So unless we get really hot CPI prints, looks like the Fed's happy with inflation around 3%. They're still gonna go ahead and cut rates and dial back the pace at which they reduce their balance sheet. On top of their increased projections of economic growth and inflation, it's no wonder stocks are ripping. And it seems like the fear and greed index is becoming just the greed index as it's been there for months and months now. And we saw a little bit of a bump up in insiders buying yesterday. Appeared to have done pretty well getting in front of that Fed-based rally we had today, but a little bit more of a gap on the latest data, showing a little bit more selling than buying, still taking advantage of these high prices. And just diving back into the charts, we can see this rally actually broadening a bit. There's the S&P 500 at all time highs. Same with the equal weight S&P. Just a few ticks away from all-time highs. Dow Jones, all-time highs. Big bounce up in the Russell 2000 small caps today. The leading indice up 2%. Have the Magnificent 7, still consolidating a bit. And the NASDAQ as well. But looking at sectors like industrials, home builders still on an absolute tear. Even retail doing well. And the IPO market coming back to life. They're all closer to highs than what actually semiconductors are. And other strong sectors like financials, even energy waking up these last couple of weeks. Some of the softest sectors are regional banks, utilities, and REITs. Momentum was the winning factor today, up 1.18%. And there's a look at my 2024 top 10 ETF picks all having a good day. And come back to the channel tomorrow and I'll show you my fourth newest indicator. It's more of a trading tool really, called My Portfolio Monitor. And it's amazing what you can do with TradingView these days, the amount of data you can pull in and manipulate. And I'll go into this one more tomorrow and show you how it's a good way you can track your portfolio and see at a bird's eye view kind of what's going on underneath the hood. There's my number one pick. Cannabis still having a little pullback at the 50-day VWAP. Apple climbing back to its 50-day VWAP. Microsoft sitting at all-time highs. And Alphabet holding ground after it gapped up on that partnership with Apple to use their AI chatbot Gemini. And Tesla still trying to hold ground there at $175 a share. Big bounce today in the crypto-related stocks on the back of that pop-up in Bitcoin. And meme stocks still doing really well. Trump's SPAC digital world up 17.7%. Still hanging in there, even as the deep state do their best job to try and cut them down and take them out of this election. There's a look at Soundtown AI, one of the other hottest stocks just consolidating a little bit here today. And the other assorted hot stocks all doing well, DraftKings. Breaking out, Vertiv, Wingstop still trading at a multiple of 150, and even an old school clothing comp, Abercrombie and Fit, still ripping higher. And the banking sector, loves lower yields, helps all the bonds on their balance sheet become more valuable. That's why we've got some good rips today in Bank of America, Citigroup, and JP Morgan, once again sitting at all time highs. All right, there we have it, guys. No surprise, Jay is still a dove, pouring fuel on the stock market fire. It's got every reason to go up. Really gonna take a big surprise to knock this thing over. If not, we may just go into that blow off top and just get a technical correction that's not based on fundamentals because it's all good right now. And so it doesn't even really matter if inflation 
comes in a little higher than expected. Market's still convinced that Jay's going to cut, which it sounds like he really wants to. Either way, he's happy to loosen financial conditions going into the election, kick the inflation can down the road, and deal with it properly at another time. So the stock market's going to keep parting like it's 1999. Thanks very much for tuning in and sticking with Click Capital. Appreciate your support, and I hope to see you again here tomorrow night.